joining us right off the very top of our uh, second hour, but first on NBCSN, uh, is uh, the head coach of the Dallas Mavericks and has been so since 2008. He's been, uh, par- pardon me, he's been with the uh, Mavericks organization for quite some time. Um, he is Rick Carlisle. How are you, coach? I'm well, Rich. How are you? I'm doing better for talking to you, sir. Um, I guess let's talk about um, what's going on with your team, first and foremost, uh, and what's going on in the real world, Rick. Uh, what have you talked to your your uh your players and team about and obviously the team owner Rick uh, Mark Cuban has been very vocal about what's been going on outside the doors of your organization what have you been talking about with your players whenever you have the opportunity to be with them Rick well you're referring to the unrest the societal yeah. unrest yes sir um, the racial injustice um, George Floyd and, and, and a lot of other situations and uh It's a very important question. Um, A couple of weeks ago, when the George Floyd incident happened, we um, we got our entire um, 30 head coaches together within about a six-hour period. There was just a a real feeling of of anger, um, and you know, just the need to get together and talk about what was going on in the world in the world to to try to use the platform that we have to try to do something to make it better. Um, and so within six hours, we get together a 30 NBA head coach Zoom call and um, formed a committee, which is called the, uh, the NBCA um, Committee on Racial Injustice and Reform and led by Lloyd Pierce, head coach of the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, the committee consists of uh, some of our really outspoken people um, on this topic over the years, Uh, Greg Popovich, Steve Kerr, J.B. Bickerstaff, Stan Van Gundy, uh, David Fisdale, Brett Brown, Doc Rivers, and Quinn Snyder. And um, as president of the Coaches Association, I'm not on the committee, but I'm I'm on all the calls. We've had four calls with the committee. Um, And what we're going to do is uh, mobilize as a head coaching group. Um, We're going to partner with uh, a local organization or two in our local markets learn the lay of the land um, with respect to all of these different problems that we're having today. Um, and then likely partner with the Obama Foundation as, as kind of a big umbrella. And then, you know, we're planning to be in this fight for, for the long haul. Um, we're interested in making a difference. Uh, we're interested in educating people. On, on racial injustice, and because uh, these things have been going going for decades, stacked on centuries, and uh, it's just uh, it's just got to a point where you know um, there, as I said, there was a mobilization of the group, and I've never seen the group so determined. So we're excited to get started, and we know it's a a very long battle, um, but we've got the stomach for it, and uh, you know we're into it. Wow. So you, you, all 30 head coaches uh, in the National Basketball Association just got together on a Zoom and just started hashing it out. Is that what you're saying? You all got together? Yeah, there was a, there was a, Lloyd Pierce, the, uh, sure. as I mentioned, coach of the Atlanta, Atlanta Hawks, right. you know, um, you know, asked for the floor and he had a, just a, a very strong um, speech to the group about his sentiments. You know, he's an Afri- African American coach. Um, who grew up um, living and seeing all these injustices. And, you know, it's been going on for decades and centuries, as I mentioned. And George Floyd just, it just put everybody over the top, which, um, which is saying a lot. And so uh, personally, I'm partnering with a group in Dallas called uh, Mothers Against Police Brutality, which is a phenomenal group of people. Um, that are a grassroots organization in Dallas only. And um, we've got a meeting scheduled with the mayor of Dallas um, tomorrow afternoon. And, uh, you know, we, we plan to, to start start the conversation and, and, uh, and, and partner with as many people as we can that, that have real influence um, in all of our cities to, 
to try to affect change. And you were the head coach when Steven Jackson was with the Pacers, uh, Rick. So, and you know uh, clearly, obviously, um, that George Floyd was a close personal friend of Steven's who, and he has been just remarkable and personalizing and and being there for the family as well as bringing home to uh, anyone who may need to know about George Floyd that um, here was a real man, a real person who had uh, an officer put put his knee on on his neck and, and kill him in the streets of Minneapolis. I mean, he, it was it, Stephen's been remarkable. Pretty well, rare. that image frozen in time will be one that, that lives on in perpetuity. Um, it's got to be a major reminder that, you know, th- this, this, these things have got to stop. Steven Jackson is, uh, not only was he a tremendous basketball player, but he's a passionate guy, um, very animated person, um, and, and a guy with a great heart. I was with him for multiple years and he, uh, he had a couple of really great years with Indiana as a player. And, uh, you know, this has been, it's been tragic to see this happen and uh and have to see his reaction to it although he's handled it with uh with an amazing amount of of grace and fortitude rick carlisle dallas mavericks head coach here on the rich eisen show and then you know oh yeah there's a pandemic so um what's going on with with that how are you uh preparing uh with now a schedule and a location and a date certain by which the league plans to open um, are you are you are you ready to roll right now, Rick? How about that? Is this a question? Well, there's, you know, <laughs> we're, we're we're collecting information. Um, I think every team has one person or another that's on some kind of committee relative to this. Things are becoming clearer and clearer. Um, you know, th- there's been a, you know, there's been an understandable hesitation to throw hard dates out there, you know, early on in this process because there's so many unknowns, but, you know, generally, um, you know, players will be back in market, you know, um, by the 21st of, of June, you know, test testing will start in, in local, uh, local markets. <clears throat> um, you know, there'll be a, a training camp in your local market for some period of time. And then there'll be a, a staggered, um, you know, move, movement of teams to uh, to Orlando. And that's that's the basics that I, that I know about that. Um, I know that there is um, an asterisk really next next to everything in terms of the level of fluidity that we're dealing with here. So, um, but we're excited to get back playing. Um, you know, I know our I know our players are excited. I think every facility has been open now for a while for individual workouts. Um, you know, there's a great amount of care and detail in, in keeping the facilities clean, you know, in between workouts, you know, after people leave at the end of the day, et cetera. And, um, you know, we're just, we're all going to have to have a, a laser, a laser like focus, you know, on everything that we're doing. And then, uh, outside, like, let's, let's all hope we get past the point where, um, COVID-19 is at the forefront um, and that the protocols and the health and safety measures can allow everybody to just focus on the competition. Um, you being the seven seed going in, uh, what's your thoughts on the fact that um, the schedule in the West, you got eight games uh, that you're going to have to play, and it, it may not be a very balanced schedule compared to people that have the same number as wins as you right now. Um, and uh, And – compared to the East that it's a simple one. Cause there's just nine teams and they, everyone will play each other once. What do you think of that? Rick? Well, I, you know, I, my feeling is that they had to come up with something that made sense and what makes sense isn't necessarily going to have great symmetry in this situation. Um, you know, I, my understanding is that you know, we will likely be playing our next eight games on the schedule, which does make sense. Um, and most of those games were were against teams that are going to be playing. So uh, in in the uh, in Orlando. So um, <clears throat> hey, we got to keep our eye on the ball. We got to you know take care of our own business. I, not not get too much into analysis of other people's situations. Um, try to do everything possible to get our players in the best possible condition 
um, in the right way. We've never had a situation where we come off of a, a, a three-month layoff quite like this. Normally, when you come nice. off the summer, you know, players will report around, um, voluntarily report around Labor Day, and then you'll have a three-week period to kind of phase everybody in, you know, with voluntary workouts, pickup games, and so forth, along with work with your strength coaches. Um, this hasn't this hasn't been that level of normalcy, and so we're we're dealing with a different, you know, far different set of circumstances. But we have a lot of smart people in this league. We have a lot of smart people on all these teams, and um, you know, we'll we'll work through it uh, meticulously. And uh, in terms of your personal uh, team and uh, issues that might be, you know, obviously I think everybody's got uh, players who might be in Europe. I mean, two of your best are are sheltered in place there. Uh, how much contact do you have with, with Luca throughout this entire process and Porzingis, Coach? Yeah, we've had contact with him. They've been on Zoom calls, you know. Um, you know, that all that will be uh, will be taken care of um, in terms of them being back here at, at the right time, and uh, and we'll proceed from there. Um, but it's been, you know, uh, this this three month period, and, and really, it's it's amazing to me that it's gone by as quickly as it has. I mean, the first week or two seemed to drag, and then I, I, somehow or other, it's all gone by pretty fast. And um, you know, in another two weeks, you know, we'll be in the midst of testing and then getting ready for for you know our our local training camp situations to begin so um we're excited but uh but cautious as as well um and uh there will continue to be a a lot of uh communication throughout our league you know on best practices as we get back into you know these these workouts with our players etc and you know safety is is the number one concern straight across the board couple more questions for you, Rick Carlisle, Dallas Mavericks head coach. Uh, any conversation being had with the coaches in your Zoom or with the players um, in terms of any protest that is going to be expected to be had prior to any games, during uh, any uh, workouts, prior to any games, based on uh, what is going on in the real world? I know there's been a conversation about what the NFL may do, but the NBA is going to be first up if we're knocking on wood, everything goes according to plan covid wise uh any conversation on that from what you're hearing rick well right now the the coaches are, are focused on you know as i mentioned an action plan involving all 30 markets to to really dive into something um that's going to be individual in nature because everybody's market's going to be a little different but we're we're all going to be under the same umbrella and we're going to all have um, to a great degree, uh, similar messaging. And so, you know, when you're talking about progress, um, you know, a peaceful protest can be part of that. But, but so far, our, our conversations have really been about, you know, how we're going to be able to proceed and progress. Um, you know, when, when there were situations involving possible protests in the last several years, uh, what I can tell you is that you know, it, with our organization, with the Mavericks, uh, Mark Cuban and myself, in talking to our players, said, uh, hey, listen, guys, you know, this is a free country. You guys are free to do uh, whatever you wish. You're free to express yourselves however you wish. Um, and But but we, we urge you to, to, to talk about what you're going, going to do and and, uh, and let us know if you're going to do something, just so we're aware. Um, and we never had any... Um, any protesting things happen with our team. And, you know, there were some teams that, <clears throat> that still do. They still lock arms during the, na- the national anthem as, as a show of um, togetherness and, and things like that. You know, I, I don't know what's going to, what, if anything, is, is going to happen. But, you know, we love the fact that the conversation, conversation has opened up. Um, and it's going. It's going to be animated, and uh, b- we believe it's going to be ongoing. And last one for you, Rick. I would be remiss if I did not point out uh, the uh, you were an assistant um, on that Pacers team that was so prominently featured in the final couple episodes of the Last Dance, the Jordan documentary on ESPN. You were a Larry Bird assistant. You were also a player on the Knicks teams as Jordan was ascending towards his six championships. Did you learn anything from that last dance, Rick? Watching it? As, as, as I assume you did. 
I mean, you know, I, I learn anything. I, I thought I thought the the entire um, documentary was extremely well done. I mean, I, you know, that kind of access um, and those kinds of um, you know being able to see in locker rooms, see practices, see inside hotel rooms, and you know, and, and all the different things that were going on. It was laid out in such a way that. You know, you you could really get a feel for the chronology of it, as well as the impact of all those things. Um, you know, I think you know, look looking at that uh, at that entire series. You know, it's just uh, it puts you know uh, us me more in awe of Phil Jackson and and what he accomplished. You know, in, in some very unusual uh, and unusually challenging situations, and how he was you know, constantly able to finish with all these teams and win and win championships. And we had him on a, um, on a coaches association membership wide zoom call this past Monday. And you know, we had a, one of our development sessions and we had over 150 of our two, 190 coaches on, um, and Phil was on a zoom call and he was taking questions from our membership, you know, on just, uh, on various different things. Um, and so, you know, I thought it was great. I, I loved the focus of the last dance on, you know, when you played during that period of time, the number one focus, you know, with, with the great players was championships. Um, how many rings, you know, how many rings you got? <laughs> Ex- expletive, expletive. You know, I mean, it was. Yeah, I saw like that. that, that I saw that, the exchange was, between Michael and Larry after that game seven. Uh, Rick, we caught that one. We, what they caught between the two of them with the well, expletives. We saw that. But I'm one. talking about the. I'm talking about you know when I was playing, when Bird was playing, when Jordan was playing, yeah. when Magic was playing. You know, I mean, I'm, you know, uh, I look putting myself in with those guys, you know, in, in, in this cover, in this sentence, you know, talking about when we were playing, me, Magic, and Larry, and Michael were playing. You know, <laughs> I know what you played. You I, mean, played I, I mean, I'm not trying to be too presumptuous here, but nice. I just remember that, you know, and, and Isaiah Thomas and, and Dumars and, you know, mm. all those guys, it, it was all about, it was all about the big prize. And I, and I love the fact that that, documentary really focused on the obsession with championships. And um, I think it's a great message for today's players because look back in those days, nobody even had cell phones, you know, I mean, let alone social media and all the different kinds of distractions and and things going on today. Um, And there's a lot more money flying around today, et cetera. You know, the, the, the focus um, and the emphasis on winning titles was just, uh, that was that was a beautiful thing for me to say. I've been fortunate to be on two championship teams in the NBA, one playing and one coaching, and I know, and I know how hard it is. And, and that feeling you get, you know, when, when you get, when you get to the end and, and you've, and you've accomplished it, I mean, it, it's a, it's a, it's a magical it's a magical feeling that can never be duplicated. Rick, thanks for the call. Really appreciate it. Enjoyed our conversation. Good luck with you uh, as you get to uh, Disney World, and uh, and hopefully everybody is safe and healthy, and we I can't wait to watch the competition. Thank you for the call. All right. Thanks, Rich. Take you care. Go. That's Rick Carlisle, the head coach of the Dallas Mavericks. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.